48 kills, Tarek GG, it's uh, what the moose here, and today I've got an analysis of some of the less obvious points in TSM's recent games. So right away we're going to freeze the clip, and I'm going to ask you guys, what would you do if you were Tristana in this situation? Obviously she's just picked up a CS, however the passive from the explosive shot has damaged the minion that the tower's just about to focus to the point where she won't be able to pick it up after the tower shot. Nami could potentially help with an auto attack or with an E, but I'm not sure it would make a difference for this particular minion. So, what would you guys do if you were Tristana? So, let's roll the clip from the beginning and see what happens. We see them both come into lane, Tristana's going to pick up the CS after two tower shots, and instead of going for the potentially unrecoverable CS, she actually goes to auto attack Lucian. And as many of us would probably know that that CS was, you know, impossible to get, I guarantee that 90% of us would have fired the auto attack at that minion that, you know, we had no chance of getting. And this might seem like something so small. I mean, what is one auto attack on Lucian going to do? And you're right, what is one auto attack on Lucian going to do? But the point is that players like Wild Turtle can understand when something isn't going to be possible or isn't going to happen and instead of doing that thing regardless, they'll do something that will potentially have more benefit, for example auto attacking Lucian. And if he does this in every situation where he knows something isn't possible, it's going to start to build up. And you can apply this principle to almost anything. As we saw a second ago, we were unable to contest Nash, and we knew we were unable to contest Nash, so instead, we push straight down mid. In this clip here, Julian Kennan, he actually gets out of the range of my E, I know he's out of the range of my E, so instead of trying to do that, I E to a minion and assassinate him with my ulti. Similarly, you might be playing bot lane on blue side and have to leash red for your jungler when the enemy jungler starts on the top side of the map, meaning the enemy bot lane gets to lane earlier and can start pushing to get level 2 before you. And if you're aware that you don't have the push power to push back, you can literally let them push to you and instead of going for minions to mitigate their level 2, you can try and harass them, literally completely ignoring minions, so that when they get level 2, one, they're pushed too far to make any use of it, and two, they'll be poked too low to start and engage. Also, as we just saw, you can use this to know how to harass under the tower. Wait till you see the tower, go for a minion, fire your auto attack just as it's about to land, and time your disengages between tower shots. The next thing I want to discuss about these games is the classic argument of void staff against death cap. And if you guys know me and uh, see my victor guide and seen how I play, you know how much I love voice staff, you know how much I love magic pen. And you know, we've been seeing quite a lot of voice staffs being picked up recently as we see in this clip on Oriana. Against like, not the most magic resist, we see Nunu and Mundo have a bit of magic resist there, or Mundo has quite a lot of magic resist. But the point I want to make is that Void Staff costs 2.3k gold, whereas Death Cap costs 3.3k gold. Void Staff gives you 70 AP and 35% pen, whereas Death Cap gives you 120 AP and 30% bonus AP. So, what does this mean? Firstly, it means that if you buy Void Staff, you should have an extra 1000 gold to spend on more AP, meaning potentially you can get you know quite a lot of AP. Uh, towards you know being close to a death cap. Secondly, as a second item, you're not actually making the most use of the 30% bonus AP that death cap offers. Um, also, you never want to be in a, in a situation where you're buying uh, void stuff reactively to magic resist. You want to always be relevant, especially on casters. You want to be relevant at every stage of the game. And buying Void Star first makes sure that you're relevant at every stage of the game. In some cases, it will make you do a lot more damage than Death Cap, and in most cases, it will make you do relatively like similar amounts of damage that Death Cap would offer, especially with the bonus gold allowing you to be spent, you know, on more AP. You don't want to be in a stage, as I just said, where you've got a death cap and you have to avoid fights because the enemy team has bought so much magic resist. You know, you have to say, wait 800 gold to finish your void stuff, and that's not what you want because you lose so much pressure in those kind of situations. 
So it is a pretty common misconception that if you get void staff against teams with no magic resist, it's useless. I mean, obviously 30% uh, pen is not flat pen, so the more magic resist you have, the better it'll be. But the fact is, it gives you such a big power spike. And the thing that I always thought was, on champions of utility, such as Lux, Orianna and Lulu, Death Cap tends to be better because obviously shields scale better with AP, but for sheer damage, sometimes getting Void Staff is a lot better. And as we saw in the clips of 4, Zhao Wei Zhao picking up Void Staff after Athenes on Orianna. Uh, admittedly, he was fairly far behind, so that was a relatively smart pick, and the enemy Mondo had a lot of AP. But also, Bjergsen prioritizing Void Staff before Death Cap on Oriana just to make use of the sheer power spike that it actually gives you and to be relevant at all stages of the game, predicting that the enemy team will buy MR. So the next thing I want to discuss about these recent games, again it's something minor, but it's something I feel could have had a big impact, and it's to do with when Dyrus was on Mondo chasing Ackerman. We see Ackerman actually abandoned his minion wave halfway up the lane and decides to try and run the length of the lane against the Mondo with no flash and his ulti being off cooldown relatively soon and I feel that if he opted to stay amongst his minion wave he could have still potentially died as Dyrus had a few seconds left on his ulti but if he got the few abilities off to reset the uh, cooldown of his ulti he could have one survived until he got his flash up potentially two got a kill or three forced Dyrus away and it's something that's so easy to do I mean like I said it might not have had a difference but it had more of a chance of making something happen than trying to run back to your tower you know running back to your tower is a hundred percent giving up whereas kiting around the minion wave is you know perhaps giving you a better chance of survival Obviously he didn't know where uh, Amazing was and you could see that Lee Sin was relatively far away for him to get help but um, and it's something I've said to you guys before, it's so important to make use of. Your minion wave is your biggest friend against champions of skill shots and having faith even on low HP is possibly one of the best things you can do rather than trying to run away from the wave because that's exactly what they want you to do. Just have faith in your wave and you know try and make something happen rather than walking away and being potentially liable with skill shots, especially on immobile champions like Ryze. He could have tried to snare and kite, but obviously the CC reduction of Mundo would have been way too much. Moving on, I really want to discuss Wild Turtle's Tristana and specifically his perfect utilization of the Tristana ulti. As we see there, ulting just as he's about to get stunned by the Braum passive, at a point where Braum and Lucian still feel strong and still want to fight, thereby maximizing Tristana's range and maximizing her damage output. And as we see there, the flash by Nami for the Braum Q, although it looked flashy and everyone was really hyped about it, I'm not entirely convinced that Q was hitting Tristana anyway, that's besides the point. And again, seeing really optimum use of the Tristana ulti, just as Poke, just pretty much on his off cooldown and really utilising the fact that it's such a low cooldown and can, you know, sway pressure back into your favour rather than taking harass and leaving them on full HP. You know, usually we see people use Tristana Ultimate purely as an execute or purely as a complete and utter disengage. You know, you're about to die, then use ulti to save yourself. Whereas, you know, Wild Turtle really utilizes the best use of it at times when people still want to fight, and that's the key. You get ulti the way when you still want to re-engage and still want to fight. Finally, I want to comment on having complete control over the game. Dyrus is in a commanding position and he can easily teleport first. Mundo's got no way of stopping him, but instead he waits for Mundo to come because he knows he offers more utility, more slow, more CC and makes best use of the fight. I'm not sure why Bjergsen doesn't ulti there because it actually forces Dyrus to flash to pick up the double kill, but again it's just smart knowledge of knowing that he should let Mundo TP first rather than you know TP him in first and potentially scaring Mundo off the TP, allowing him to pick up two kills in the tower and get a commanding position rather than potentially just one kill or forcing them to back off when they're scared of not having the TP from Dr. Mundo. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't often watch these kind of games, but I'm really pleased I did. I thoroughly enjoyed watching them all. And if there's one thing I really want you to take away from this video, and perhaps the most important thing, that is 
the wild turtle water attack we saw at the start of the video. Even though it seems small, it probably is the most important aspect you can try and incorporate into your gameplay. So please leave a comment, let me know what you think. Please like, favourite, tell your friends um, and please subscribe if you like what I'm doing. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.